This week's video is coming by popular demand, borderline personality disorder, eating disorders, and self-harm. How do they relate? And so stay tuned towards the end of the video because I'm going to give you the dirty little secret about therapy. So I know a lot of you have asked me about borderline personality disorder or otherwise known as BPD, which is easier for me to say, to be honest, because borderline personality disorder is like, blah, 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 I'll probably mess it up. So BPD is something that a lot of us struggle with. We may have been told by one person that we're diagnosed with it, or we have BPD-like symptoms. And a lot of us just wonder, what the heck does that mean? And if I do have it, why does everybody act like it's such a bad thing, right? Now, yeah. Just to give you a little background on what borderline personality disorder is, is it's really, in my opinion, it's our mind's way of coping with things. And I'm gonna to read to you a little bit from the DSM so that you know when someone says you may have um, BPD-like symptoms or you actually have BPD, what they're really talking about, okay? And I'll try to make this very clear and concise because a lot of times people throw words around that don't really pertain to us. And I want you to, I want to make sure you understand what BPD really is. So the DSM states that we have to have five or more of the following. And this is the older DSM, because the new one isn't quite out yet. So um, when the new one comes out, I'll get it and then we'll see if there's any changes, but I don't think there is to this. So the first one, and the one I've talked about before and another one of my videos, is frantic efforts to avoid real or imagined abandonment. And this was in my fear of abandonment um, video. And this one's probably the most common that I see in borderline patients, but like I said, you have to have five or more. That's only one. The second, a pattern of unstable or intense interpersonal relationships characterized by alternating between extremes of idealization and devaluation. Now, in the therapy world, we talk about it, people putting us on a pedestal or throwing us under the bus. So you either love me or you just hate my guts and you wish I'd go away, right? It's that extreme, up and down. And that's usually what people will notice first is that because they're in relationships with you. So if you're hating them and loving them in two days, they're like, oh, you know, and that can be really hard. Now, the third one is identity disturbance, markedly and persistently unstable self image or sense of self. Now we're all like, oh, wow, well, that applies to a lot of people. And that's why you have to have at least five of these. But I think that that one point is why it's so linked to eating disorders, okay? Because we don't think very highly of ourselves. We have a very distorted vision of who we are and what we're about. And that can lead to a lot of other things like, like eating disorders, right? And then the next one is impulsivity in at least two areas that are potentially self-damaging. This could be anything from spending habits, like we'll go on spending sprees, or it could be sex where we um, have sex with a bunch of different strangers and it's not really, we're not safe about it and we just act impulsively, right? It can be any kind of thing like that. I think in here they say, yeah, substance abuse, reckless driving, binge eating. So again, connected to eating disorders, right? Then the next one, the fifth one, is recurrent suicidal behavior, gestures or threats, or self-mutilating behavior. Now this was my frustration with the new DSM because self-mutilating behavior or self-harm doesn't just occur when we have borderline personality disorder, but the DSM only puts it in here. So we'll work on that, right? But a lot of us struggle with suicide, and I find with my borderline patients, many of them use suicide and suicidal ideation as a way to work on that abandonment because they're afraid someone's gonna run away. So then we act out and we say, well, I'm gonna commit suicide or I'm hurt myself and, and that gets people back in our lives, right? And that makes sense. I can see the connection, can't you? So that's kind of how that's used. The sixth thing is effective instability due to a marked reactivity of mood. So this is like you're intensely irritable or anxiety and it's usually, it lasts for a couple hours. So our mood is just unstable, it's all over the place. I might be really happy one minute and then really mad and sad the next. It's like, ah, it's all over and it feels really crazy. So that, but it doesn't usually last more than a couple hours, at the most a day. If it lasts longer than that, then it might be bipolar, which I'll talk about in another video. Let's not get distracted, okay? On to the next one. So number seven is chronic feelings of emptiness. I know we're all thinking, well, shit, Katie, I feel like that, that's me. Oh, 
But remember, we have to have five of these. And you may feel like a lot of these pertain to you. And, oh, I can really connect with that. And that's why you may have heard, oh, I, you have borderline tendencies or borderline-like symptoms, right? Because we don't meet all criteria. So that was the seventh. There's two more. I'm almost done. Now the eighth is inappropriate, intense anger or difficulty controlling anger. Now this is that, I feel like a lot of these kind of go hand in hand, but with the eating disorders and self-harm, you know how I just talked about in my PTSD video, how we're anger out or we're anger in? Well, this is saying that we have inappropriate, intense anger. So we really don't have a place to put it and we don't really know why it's there, but we feel it and it's bad and blah, you know? So that's another way it relates. And the last one is transient stress-related paranoia or paranoid ideation or severe dissociative symptoms. Now that also kind of goes in line with my PTSD video because remember how I talked about the ways that we kind of deal with a situation and some of us can actually dissociate like, um, I'm trying to think of what I even talked about. My binge, when I talked about binging and bulimia, when you're kind of an out of body experience, like I can't handle this, I'm stepping out, oh, and you like watch yourself doing stuff. That's kind of what disassociation is because we are too intense, everything is too intense that we can't even be present, like fully present in the, in the moment, okay? So that's what borderline personality disorder is and you can see how it ties into our self-harm behaviors and our eating disorder but remember we have to meet five of those criteria to be properly diagnosed and we may go in and out we may meet some sometimes and some not the other times but that gives you an idea of what it is now the dirty little secret of therapy and kind of something that i think is really important for you to know and i I feel like many therapists might be like, well, thank God somebody's finally telling people this because I know a lot of you tell me all the time, yeah, I keep getting passed around and people will say, oh, I don't really deal with that and, and we don't know what to do. We're like, well, holy moly, I've been looking for therapy forever and I finally get to see somebody and then you're like, I don't see you. Great, thanks for nothing, right? And it's really frustrating and that can happen a lot and that even perpetuates our struggle with abandonment if we are borderline, right? We're like, holy moly. So why does that happen? Why? Why do we feel like we're so like the black sheep? And that's really because even in school as a therapist, they tell us how difficult it is to treat someone with borderline personality disorder. And I almost feel like, yeah, they should let us know. But instead of saying that and just making it like, you don't want a lot of borderline patients, they're really hard to deal with. And yeah, because you're volatile, your mood's all over the place. You feel completely out of control and you're afraid people are gonna hurt you and you wanna hurt yourself. I mean, it makes sense, right? But as a therapist, I'm not afraid of borderline patients. It's really not that hard to deal with. And that's why, to be honest, why I tell you all, get a DBT workbook, join a DBT group. DBT, which stands for Dialectical and Behavioral Therapy, is the best thing. It's the saving grace for people who struggle with borderline because it helps us get in control of our emotions a little bit more instead of feeling like they control us. So that extreme fear of abandonment, the mood volatility, the suicidal ideation, all of those characteristics, that intense anger, can all be calmed. We recognize it coming in, we can feel it, we use our mindfulness. There's a lot of techniques that they use and it can kind of bring us back down. So that's why people avoid borderline and people get a bad stigma and it's really not so bad. We just have to work together. We need to get our DBT workbook. We need to start working on it. I know it's hard and it's intense and you feel it and ah, uh, right? But then we're, we're calmer, we feel better and therapists will be more willing to work with you. And I just hate that it's given such a bad rep, but people don't talk about it. They don't let us know. They don't tell you other than we won't see you anymore. I need to refer you out. And that just makes us feel like shit, right? So that's kind of a little insight into why that happens. So I hope that makes sense. And I hope that that kind of clarifies what BPD is, why it's given a bad rep, how we're diagnosed with it, and how we can work on it. So hop online, there is a great workbook for dialectical and behavioral therapy by Marsha Linneman. She's the one who did all of the research on DBT and she's actually the one who I think even coined the phrase DBT therapy. Check it out, take time, look into it, look into DBT, 
see, blah, 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 DBT groups in your area. We can get a hold of this, we can work together, and then we can get the help that we need, right? So stay tuned for my next videos. Don't forget to subscribe. Give this a thumbs up if you like it. I plan on covering this topic more, and I wanna make sure that if you, if you like this topic and you want more, that you give me a thumbs up and let me know, because I will take that into consideration when I'm putting together my next video as we work towards a healthy mind and a healthy body.